And welcome back to Joe Kelly Radio here. We are about to have a special guest. He was a child prodigy at the age of two, playing guitar and has just progressed all through his career. Hasn't uh, taken a step off from his excellence and he has just released a great new record on vinyl too. Uh, Aquarius Purple, he is out of New York City. His name is Marcus Machado and uh, we're really finally glad to have Marcus Machado with us. How you doing? Man, I'm good, man. Thank, thank you for having me. How are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing great. And um, I got to first talk about the uh, the record release party. I, I didn't catch it live, but I caught it like an hour after you had concluded. But that, w- that was really nice. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah. You know, we was just trying to I was trying to figure out a way to, you know, bring the party virtually to, you know, everybody's living rooms, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Of and um, no, it was just a, it was a spontaneous um, you know, type of last minute. Just say, you know what, let's just go virtual. Let's just go live and just see what happens. And you know, I was so happy. You know, everybody came out and really tuned in and stuff like that and got a first listen of the album. Can uh, people still watch the the uh, thing, or was it kind of one night only? Yeah, it was like a one night only. So it was kind of like, yeah, that that's it. You know, if you missed it, then, you know, too bad. But, um, you know, we'll have some more. We still have some more uh, things in the works and some cool stuff coming up. So, you know, keep your guy, keep your eyes, ears and open, you know, for that. <laughs> uh, Marcus website is official Marcus Machado dot com, M-A-C-H-A-D-O dot com. Yep. And uh, Aquarius Purple just released. Uh, you sold out of, of the the limited edition purple vinyl right away, right? Yeah, it was crazy. It was like within 57 seconds, you know, people were hitting me up and saying, man, I, I logged on at 12 o'clock, one o'clock, and that was it. You know, 101, it was it was over with. But, you know, just overwhelmed of the response and, you know, positive vibes and getting a lot of great feedback from the album. Uh, of course, the limited edition vinyl, the purple vinyl is sold out, but the actual black vinyls are still available. You can get it on my website and stuff like that. Yeah. So is there going to uh, as well a CD and MP3? Yeah. So we're looking um, between now and probably next month that we'll do okay. a digital release and, you know, make sure everybody gets, you know, the album in all different forms and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, when I was I well, I went to school at NYU for for a little bit down in the early '80s, and record stores right. were really they, they were really happening. I mean, um, have you gotten a lot of support from the New York stores um, for your new release and stuff? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like like I said, I mean, we're living in a, a time where everything now is super like you know digital, and you know everybody wants to have it on their phones. But you know, with this project, I definitely wanted to you know, kind of go back to the old school way because that's how the way I was brought up is like listening to records and stuff. And, you know, just the fact that the vinyl world and everybody's been super uh, supportive of, you know, of this record and stuff. And, you know, everybody wants to pick it up. So, no, it's been, I've been overwhelmed with all the responses and stuff like that um, from all different fields and stuff. So, yeah, it's it's exciting. Like I said, the project, um, I started this album nine years ago. Um, basically, mm-hmm. I was living in Amsterdam where I really started, you know, focusing on getting the album, you know, putting together. And then between that time, you know, I ended up coming back home to New York and, you know, touring, working with several different artists and stuff. So it was kind of like a tug and pull, you know, trying to finish up the record. And um, finally, um, last year during the pandemic, where everything kind of shut down, kind of forces me to kind of like really sit down and finish up, you know, the album. And um, yeah, I'm super proud of it and, you know, happy how the way, you know, everything came out. For sure. So, so you're right in New York City, and yeah. you know, talking about the pandemic, it was hot and heavy with with COVID uh, right when it started. Uh, what what was your uh, feelings as a musician, a working musician, when when that happens? Is because I'm sure you've never gone through that in your yeah. whole life. How, how did you deal with it initially? Um, with with me, man, I I was I was dealing with it like everybody else. Uh, I mean beginning of uh, 20, you know, 2020, you know, everything was set, you know, I was um, actually touring with um, Jose James and we just came back from um, from an actual tour in Japan. And we was literally like a week off from like being stuck. Like if we would have stayed there a week longer, we would have probably been stuck in, um, <laughs> in Japan. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, after that, then, you know, I had you know, a few family members passed away due to COVID. And then, you know, we just all got, hit you know there was no shows no nothing like that so 
for me, I kind of took it as, you know, this is a reset, you know what I mean? Things will get back to normal, but, you know, just try to stay busy. So did a lot of session work and, um, and finished up, you know, all these projects that I kind of had on the side and kind of, you know, really focus and zoned in on finishing up my album and, you know, several other projects. And that's what kind of kept me busy through the whole pandemic because, um, yeah, I mean, it's super real for musicians. Like you can either be super, uh, creative or you can be depressed you know what i mean so right right yeah i kind of took you know took it to like you know what just zone in and just use this time to reset and just finish up the project so you know i'm totally grateful and um blessed to have you know stayed busy during the pandemic during the during that time mm -hmm. yeah and and sorry to hear about your your family members and yeah, no, passing away that that's awful tough too yeah especially yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so you know like i said it was I went through it like everybody else, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, just the main thing is health, you know what I mean? Health wise. And, you know, you can't do nothing if you're not healthy, you know what I mean? So right. yeah, you definitely, you know, stay health healthy first. And um, yeah, the music and now, you know, we're back in the new year, 2021 and, um, you know, things are getting a little bit better and, you know, I'm just excited to, to finally release all this music that I've been holding on to for some time, you know? Yeah. It seems like you've got a great, a group of friends and musicians doing a lot of creative things out in Brooklyn and all over the city. Um, I, I'm thinking back to like the late nineties when um, like the Ninny factory, mm -hmm. um, so many great shows in those little rooms and, you know, Jeff Lee Johnson and Bernie Warhol was in the big room. Um, talk, talk about the scene that you guys are a part of, because you, you got a lot of things going on. You mentioned um, let's hear about some of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was so much different stuff. Um, I had a, a project with the legendary uh, Pete Rock, Pete Rock and the Soul Brothers, right. which is, um, features Pete Rock, uh, Mono Neon on bass, myself. Oh, yeah. And Mono, yeah. Holmes, uh, from Jack White. Um, also, uh, Jermaine Holmes, which was the backing vocalist for D'Angelo and the Vanguard. And it's basically like a super, super group of, uh, you know, musicians. And, you know, those are my brothers and stuff. So that project is out now. It's called Peace Instrumentals 3. Um, the second project I have out is uh, the Group 13, which features Pharaoh Monch, myself, and Daru Jones, which is like a rock uh, hip hop project. That's, you know, it's that's another project, too, that, you know, we've been working on for six years and just been overwhelmed with all the great responses, you know, from that record. And then in between that time, too, my, myself and my sister has a production company called um, Mach 7 Music, where, you know, we produce hip hop, R&B, different stuff. And then we started up a a TV show, a bi-weekly show on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook called QS TV. Basically, it kind of showcases creatives from, you know, the New York City area. And, you know, if you're a musician, artist, right. painter, whatever have you, you know, you have a platform to come out and play. And, you know, and really something for independent artists, because I feel like during the pandemic, with everything shut down, musicians didn't have no outlet to really, like, play. Everybody was just, like, shedding you know, in their house, you know, in the studio, whatever. But, um, you know, this was just a platform just to have, you know, to have them come out, you know, to, to a venue and really play. Of course, there's no audience, but, you right. know, to let all that stuff out and, um, you know, try to get back to the old school way of how things used to be. Because, you know, you had BT Jazz, you had mm -hmm. a lot of different um, shows that music shows that you really don't see, you know, no more. Um, yeah. You know, you know, so just trying to bring all that back. So I think between all those different um, circles and also to doing movie scoring stuff with like Robert Glasper and Layla Hathaway, you know, and working with Anderson Pack on, you know, a couple of things, you know, just um, just staying busy, just staying busy. And um, I feel like, you know, as an artist, independent artist and musician, don't limit it yourself to just one thing to just touring or putting out records, you know, music is very wide span. So, you know, you try to try to do as much as you possibly can in different areas of music, you know? Man, Marcus Machado is with us here on Joe Kelly Radio and um, QS TV. Um, I, I caught some of that. Uh, the last one, I think it was the last one. Um, yeah. It was cool that you you um, you were behind kind of the mixer and then you w walked down yeah, coolly. Yeah. You, ha you had the... Uh, yeah, Vogue. It's a double. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a doubler microphone. So basically it's like a MIDI microphone where you can actually beatbox or sing and you hear all these different sounds and it could sound like an 808 or right. like strings and stuff like that. So yeah, I kind of did like a little looper on the beat and then, you know, went and started jamming out to, you know, beatboxing on the beat on the doubler and stuff. So yeah, it's, it's just fun, just experimenting, you know. <laughs> so so people can go to uh, YouTube 
or uh, Twitch, just type in QS TV and it'll go right to it, right? Yep. Well, on YouTube, you can find us on QS TV. Um, Instagram is official QS TV. And um, yeah, you can catch the show every other Thursday um, at 8 p.m. Follow, subscribe, and um, yeah, you'll see a whole bunch of different stuff on there. I, we're at episode five right now. We have Pete Rock on episode three. And, you know, just you see a whole lot of great of um, a lot of great musicians and different artists from, you know, New York City area. And then also, too, we're branching out to friends, you know, overseas and stuff. So, you know, we're not limited just only here, but, you know, worldwide thing and just giving people a platform to showcase their talents, you know. So as you grew up in a musical family, you tell you talk about the records. I know your parents were, were big music uh, lovers. Yeah. Were they musicians too? Yeah, um, my my father he was a musician, or he played a little bass and a little guitar. My mom she was like an A and R, like she could tell you any record with song that was a hit, and her record collection was like crazy. So that's where you know wow. I. Picked up. I picked up from you know in our house it could be from Weather Report to Cold Train to. Crosby, Stills and Nash to uh, to Jimi Hendrix, you know, just all different genres of music. So growing up, you know, then also too, you know, I'm an 80s baby. So, you know, with, you know, hip hop, like Tribe Called Quest and Slum Village, then, you know, I kind of took all those different influences. And I was like, man, you know, if one day if I start making music, I would like to incorporate, you know, all these different genres, because as much as I love rock, I love blues the same way equally, you know what I mean? And uh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. In our house, you know, it was just a whole bunch of music and records and jamming. And, you know, my sister, she's also to a, a producer, you know, female producer, you know, in her own star in her own right, too, as well. And um, yeah, just in my other sister, everybody plays a, a instrument, you know what I mean? Or something, you know. So did you give them uh, a a vinyl purple, vinyl of Aquarius no, purple. No, for them? No, I told them they had to pay for it. No, 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 no. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, no, no. They have it. No, they have it. They were okay. No, no, they have it. No, they were the the first people to actually listen to it. You know, the test printing and all that stuff too. So right. Those those are my biggest uh, critics. Critics. You know what I mean? So I say, you know, check this out. Let me know what you think. And you know, they all liked it. And you know, super proud of the the project. And you know, for me with this being my debut album, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that to get the point across that, you know, it's a, it's an album for the guitar gods, you know, for people like Eddie Hazel, Prince, you know, Jimmy, Buddy Guy, you know, and all the Sly Stone, all the different, you know, people that I grew up on and just wanted to have an album that represents all those different genres of music. So, you know, whether if you're a rock person or blues person, something for everybody and just trying to create something new, you know. All right. And uh, you can go to officialmarcusmachado.com to keep up to date on when the official release for uh, the the black vinyl is not out yet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The black vinyl is out right now. Um, you okay. Can, yeah, you can go to my website or you can go to Soul Step Records, and um, yeah, you can the black vinyls okay. are available. And then sometime next month there will be um, a digital release. So, you know all the people that's you know on spotify and itunes and you know cds and all that stuff that'll be available as well but for right now you can get the black vinyl on official marcusmachado.com okay and and also i really dug um you were on the late night with stephen colbert with 13 yeah. the trio sounding really really strong man thank you, that, man. that was great thank you man thank you man i appreciate it. Yeah, yeah 13 is a uh, is a project, you know, those are my brothers, man. And, you know, Farrell Monch, he's such a, a visionary, you know, as a, not only a lyricist, but, you know, as a director and, you know, merging all the different ideas that we put for that project. And, you know, a trio with it just being just an MC, a guitar player and a drummer, you know, it's, it's different, you know what I mean? Cause in that, right. in that project, you know, I'm playing lead guitar and bass at the same time, because a lot of people was like, you know, you know, if I if you need a bass player, you know, I can play too, but that's the whole whole dynamic of the band. You know, each person brings something different to the table. And you know, that was a lot of fun, you know, doing the late night with them and stuff. And um, yeah, that that album is out right now. So, you know, go to 13 um dot com, channel thirteen dot com and yeah, pick up um, our new record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I liked how uh Farrell, you know, introduced the 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 style of music that 13 plays and, and the band right in between the two songs. That was really cool. Yeah, man. Yeah. Man. yeah. Because like I said, he's a big uh, Black Sabbath, you know, Led Zeppelin and, uh, you know, Band of Gypsies, you know, head. So, you know, we wanted to merge 
the rock influence, but also too, you know, with the hip hop influence too as well. And you know, right. and just try just trying to bring something new, you know what I mean? And I feel like, you know, we're in a time where, you know, every day there's something being put out, you know. So it's like it's so much music that's being put out every day. It's it's hard to find, you know, something that's good or not good. You know what I mean? Because you have so much material that's being put out to you every day. So, you know, we want it to be different and, you know, find our own lane, you know, to you know, to start something new. Mm-hmm. Another, another really interesting, uh, you know, performance, a couple of performances that I saw, you know, performing the national anthem with the Golden State Warriors and my team, the New York Knicks, uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah. And I got to say this, I mean, amazing performances on both nights, but the fans, they waited until the end to, to <laughs> give you a great applause. Usually you're hearing shouting and, you know, but people were, they were into it and they were listening. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, that was a, another crazy, you know, experience, you know, for, you know, for me, it was always a dream to, you know, play for the Knicks and, you know, play the anthem. You know what I mean? It's one thing to do a half show and stuff, but to to play at the Garden, you know, it's, you know, especially the anthem, you know, within a few seconds, if people don't dig it, they're going to let you know. New Yorkers will <laughs> let you right, know. Right, right. <laughs> so it was kind of like, you know, all eyes is, you know, is on you. And um, yeah, it was an amazing experience, you know, just to play. And then, you know, after the performance, you know, amount of people was coming up to me and saying, man, you know, I don't really care for, for the anthem, but you know, your version, I really dug it a lot. You know, it means, it means a lot. It means a lot. And, you know, and then actually to go to Oakland and play for the Golden State Warriors, you know, that was fun too as well. So, you know, I love them both equally and stuff. And, you know, it's just, um, yeah, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to, you know, have played, play those two venues mm-hmm. yeah and uh also besides the perform you're a great performance i just realized i said wow the whole roster has changed in so short of a time yeah yeah <laughs> it was I'm like yeah, yeah. Was because um golden state that was the last i think after when i played there was maybe two three more games before they switched over to uh san francisco so the oracle arena that's gone now and also to kd kevin durant was there so i got a chance to see right. Durant play, you know, like some of his last games before you right. know, he switched over here to Brooklyn. You know what I mean? So yeah, it was is it it's a lot. It's a lot. A lot has happened in, you know, that short span of time. Mm-hmm. I th- I think the Oracle was one of the last places Prince did a show. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. Piano yeah. microphone. Yeah. So yeah. yep, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So also um you were when you were uh um, 10 years ago, or maybe, maybe less than that, Rolling mm-hmm. Stone featured you as one of the youngest and brightest right. uh, guitarists. And uh, what, what was that like to be featured like that? And, and oh, you know, man, rightly it, so. Man, it was super, super random, man. I went and um, a friend of mine's had sent me a link and he was like, man, it's, you know, Rolling Stone is doing this uh, like contest type of thing, you know, with guitars. And, you know, I thought of you, you should check it out. And I was like, uh, I'm not really into the contest type of thing. So, but he was like, man, the only thing you got to do is just, you know, send in your video and just see what happens. So, you know, I send in the video and I didn't think nothing of it. I was like, yeah, whatever. And then um, maybe like a month, a couple of weeks later went by and I got an email saying that, you know, I'm like in the top 100 as a finalist for, you know, to be the next young gun. And, you know, I thought that was enough. I was like, wow, man, they really, you know, recognize because, you know, a lot of contests, a lot of times you have so many different musicians and guitar players, you know, it's hard to to find, you know, you know, the best guitar players and stuff like that, you know, who's good or who's not, you know, they just kind of just throw out a name and they're like, okay, here you want. And um, yeah, I went and they, I sent in another video. And then from that, it went from that to, I was in the top eight, you know, out of um, 100, 100 guitar players and stuff. And I said, wow, I said, this is crazy. I go, you know, thank you just for even Rolling Stone to even mention me as a finalist. Right. That was enough for me. You know, I was even thinking no more else. And then finally, when they called me and they said, no, you are the you, you're the winner. You're the next, you know, young gun. I said, wow, this is, this is crazy. And um, yeah, it was a it was a you know beautiful experience. They flew me out to um, L.A. I ended up, you know, recording the song out in a studio in LA. And um, at the time I was working on, I was just finishing up my EP uh, 29, which that's out now on, you know, iTunes and all streaming platforms. And um, yeah, the timing was just right. And um, 
yeah, it was it was, it was crazy for me. It was definitely surreal. You know, I wasn't expecting none of that at all. And um, just the timing of that, and then my EP was coming out. I had just came back from living in Europe, you know, for a while and stuff like that. So you know, I just felt like I guess the lines, the cards would line. You know what I mean? So no, it was a great experience for sure. So so what um brought you out to Amsterdam and and live out there a few years? Yeah, um, Amsterdam, um, I was, my musical uh, family, um, Sandra St. Victor, V. Jeffrey Smith, and Peter right. Lord, were known as, you know, the family stand, and, um, you, you know, they're, they're like my mentors and, you know, my musical parents, and um, at 17, you know, they, they brought me out to Europe, they brought me underneath their wing and said, listen, we want you to come out with us before, and, you know, I was such blown away by, you know, playing in London and, Amsterdam and Germany and all these places. I always was fascinated with um, Europe, you know, just playing out there, even with the story of Hendrix, you know, just him going out there. And it's, it was just a different scene. And, um, you know, once I went out there with them touring, you know, I was like, man, I got to find a way to stay out here if it's possible. And um, it just so happened they introduced me to another friend of mine's out there. And um, he was working on a record. And he was like, man, you know, I want you to come out, come back out when you finish with the tour and, you know, start producing some songs for my record. And as soon as I finished up the tour, came back home and then went back out and ended up staying in Amsterdam for like two months, finished his um, his album. And then from that, it was like, man, he was like, man, let's we got all these shows coming up. And before you know it, here I am, you know, 120 shows, you know, playing. And wow. that's what kind of made me. uh stay you know mm -hmm. stay in you know holland and i was like man i was like you know what let me try it let me do six months and see what happens and you know and if if all goes well keep going if not then you know at least i try something out of my comfort zone and um yeah that's what happened you know end up touring and playing and doing a lot of different shows all across of europe and you know that's what made me stay in um in Holland for, uh, you know, for a couple of years. And it really showed me and taught me a lot, you know, from production, working with different artists and it just kind of opened my ears up a little bit more. And yeah, it was a great experience. You know, I will say to any young musician or anybody out there, you know, traveling is key. If you have an opportunity to travel, you can learn so much by just traveling and just, you know, living your dream. And um, yeah, that's, that's what happened. Yeah, man, that's how I ended up being out there for a while. Yeah, when I was in my my mid mid to late twenties, I, I lived in Taiwan for three years, and it wow, was wow. a great experience. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, man. this yeah, is man. a different region of the world. Yeah, yeah, totally different. And um, you know, being out there, I was kind of in that world for a minute, and then it's just like the the stars were aligned because when I was like itching to kind of get back home, that's when the Rolling Stone thing had happened. So you know, Rolling Stone that really brought me back home. And, you know, from there, you know, I was able to finish, uh, you know, my EP and put that out. And then, you know, I came back and then everything was rolling from there. Still during that time, I was still working on Aquarius Purple. So it's like when, you know, when you hear the record, you know, this is a record that started like eight, nine years ago up to now. So it's like it started with me being in Europe. It started again when I came back during my time here and through the pandemic. So, you know, I'm. I'm just glad that it's out. <laughs> so yeah, it's right. a big relief. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and being in demand in, in uh, with working on other people's records. Um, yeah. Did have you, you probably, did you record down in the village at where Hendrix electric lady land? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did some recording out um, at electric lady. I did. Um, I did some stuff with um, Yeba, uh, who's a great uh, singer. Yeah. I did some recording out there and, you know, different studios and stuff and, you know, just, just just trying to stay busy because besides for me being an artist, I'm a producer too as well. So for me, you know, my thing is always try to work, you know, just kind of, you know, have a long range of different, you know, musical ideas and stuff. And that's when, you know, I started working with Robert Glasper and, you know, he kind of brought me on underneath his wing for movie score and stuff. And, you know, that's how I ended up doing a project with him and Layla Halfway which is a song right. that I'll call, you know, Show Me Your Soul from a documentary uh, called Mr. Soul. And, you know, start getting in. And then from that, I start getting into scoring stuff. So it was a slew of different different stuff going on at the same time. And, um, you know, just trying to stay busy. And, you know, I think for me, you know, of course, I could have put out the album, you know, years ago, but I just feel like timing, it's all about timing. You know what I mean? Because right. I think like even now, 
the the downside with COVID, like not having those shows is one thing, but I really think that with COVID, it kind of put a reset on everybody and it let people start paying attention to real music again. You know what I mean? Whereas everything was so fast coming to where it's like, you know, if there's a show, you're like, yeah, I can go check him out, you know, another day to where now it's like, you're almost grateful, you know, for shows and, you know, virtual experiences and all that stuff too. So yeah, I think the pandemic kind of made it, it made, it made people the force to listen to music again, even more, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, I just feel like the timing was perfect. And um, yeah, I'm just glad that it's out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Marcus Machado was with us. You can go to official Marcus Machado dot com and aquarius purple mm. pick up the vinyl right now and uh we'll let you know when when the downloads digital and uh is, is ready to go sure. hey another another really uh, important project you worked on with uh shapeshift mm -hmm. which is, it was a great song we're, we're playing you. here and uh tell us about that because you you're right in new york city a lot mm. of injustice and everything and people protest and and what was it like in new york city to, yeah. going through this and what got you to the point to make this record yeah it was it was heavy um to to that record shapeshift it really started uh it started like around the time of um, um mike brown and you know trayvon martin and you know mm -hmm. it was just an idea so it started like the the template of the song was already kind of done and then you know in the midst of working on different other projects and different songs for the album it was just kind of sitting there and then, you know, doing, you know, last, the last two years, you know, that song, I kept coming back to it, coming back to it and piece by piece, it just started putting it together. So finally last year with, you know, it was a really strange time in New York here, you know, with a lot of injustice and just, just crazy stuff, just nonsense. And um, I felt like, you know, for me, there's a song that, you know, there needs to be a message and, you know, there needs to be some type of uh, awakening and, you know, and it's not, not nothing to say to go out and go, you know, be bad or nothing to start smashing up windows and stuff. But it's like, people need to hear the message and, you know, use, use our voice and our, uh, um, you know, our instruments as voices, you know what I mean? To make change and stuff. And, you know, I reached out to Jay Swiss and RL and, you know, I sent them the song and, you know, was kind of talking about, you know, everything that was going on and it just happened and it morphed into, you know what we know now is shapeshift and um you know it's a it's it's a heavy song but also too it's a it's a song that you know i've kind of went went out of the box too because i never really dug that deep uh for you know a song of my own like that too as well and you know i'm happy how the way that it came out and you know just just a message and you know even though we're going through tough times there's light at the tunnel you know what i mean so that's what yeah the video um you could definitely check it out on YouTube. It, it's it's really well done and, and definitely moving. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Now I got to ask you. I got to ask you a question, a musical question, because I was watching. Uh, you guys were jamming at Lincoln Center a few years ago, mm -hmm. and um, you played Kiss, and then you went into talking loud and saying nothing. Wow. Now, now, before you went into Kiss, or maybe in the midst of it, did you mix in like? Uh, Midnight Hour by Wilson Pickett. Yeah, I did. I did. Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, because I'm like, oh, wow. my wife and I were were uh, <laughs> we were watching it. I said, wait a second, I think Midnight Hour clicked in there. I recognized Midnight Hour before Kiss, and I'm the biggest Prince fan. That's crazy, man. That's crazy, man. You're really listening. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, because you know I dig musicians like yourself. So thank you, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, that was such a fun, fun gig and stuff. And um. It was cold. It was a cold winter that time outside. But um, yeah, it was just it was good vibes, good energy, and you know we just that was kind of like a spontaneous. Yeah, I was like, you know, I told the told the guys, I was like, just follow me. We're just gonna jam out, and then we'll get into the show. And that's what happened. Kiss just kind of just happened. Midnight, you know, whistle picket song happened, and then yeah, that was the vibe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great, great job with with the legends right there. I, I actually. When I was like in my second year of radio, I think it was back in 83, I met Wilson Pickett and James Brown here in Stratford, Connecticut, backstage the same night. And, you know, if I was the age I am now, I would be like, wow, I really should have appreciated more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like 19 years old. And, but, you know, they, they were really cordial and everything. Of course, great performers. No, cool. Legends, legends. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. 
so so for the guitar people out there maybe pick up a thing or two for you i know you, you um you go out to nam pretty often right yeah yeah i've been going to nam these this past but well, not this year with the past two years yeah i've been going out yeah to nam it was fun yeah the not last year but the year before we were um uh, i played you know on the d angelico you know showcase stuff and then also too you know, was out there with doug winbush from a living color oh, yeah. Shout right. out to Again, Daru. We the win, have another, the Windbash, right? Yeah, Windbash. Yeah, the Windbash. Yeah. We have another project too that's um we're working on that's going to be coming out at some point. Uh, DMD, the vibes is you know it's myself, Daru, and Doug Winbush, which is a crazy uh power trio. It's like a, oh yeah, wow, a, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Doug kind of really introduced me to the whole Nam experience and all that. But yeah, it's it's fun, man. It's always fun, and also too, it, it's a hang because you get to see friends that you know usually you're running to on the road and, you know, everybody's busy and it's just one big party, you know what I mean? One big hang. Do you, do you keep it simple on your live performances or you go you go crazy yeah. with the, all the yeah. kids? Yeah, I think for me, live performances, I'm not, you know, far as with effects and stuff like that, I'm pretty um simple. You know, I'm not, for me, more in the studios where I'm more experimental and stuff, but, you know, for me, it's like a, a fuzz phase or you know, a delay, a wawa, and that's it, you know what I mean, pretty much. And, you know, for me, it's it's all about, you know, feeding off the energy of the crowd and just playing, you know what I mean? Right. So so for the TV, it's a really cool setup, like kind of a, like a nighttime feel like you're at a nightclub. Where do you guys record that? Oh, say it again. Where, where do you record our QS TV? It's a nice oh, setup you guys oh, got. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, QS TV is a spot out in um, Brooklyn. It's called Quantum. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a really dope, uh, dope club, and you know that's where we do our recordings and stuff like that. So you know, as as you know, things are opening back up. So hopefully, you know, when we'll see how things are when things open back up, and if all goes well, we can start doing QS TV in front of an audience. You know what I mean? Yeah, that would be really nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. What uh, one spots in New York City are you particularly looking forward to getting back on stage there? Man, I've always loved Blue Note. You know, Blue Note is always a fun place, you know, because we mm -hmm. always, you know, I would always play there. Um, New Blue is another uh, dope, dope spot, um, you know, out out in the city and stuff. There's so many places. Um, Yeah, but then at the same time, you know, a lot of places is closed down, like Arlene's Grocery and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. It's heavy, yeah. It's a lot of, lot of clubs that has, has shut down. So, you know, I'm curious to see you know, which ones are going to be holding up. And I think at this point right now, it's just, we just, just happy to play, you know what I mean? Just to get out and just play. Of course, it's not going to be, there's going to be some procedures, of course, and like that. And I know the capacity is saying right now is about a hundred people, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, for the most part, it's just, we're just all excited to get back to playing. You know what I mean? I don't care right. if it's two people, you know what I mean? I mean, the virtual experience, you know, it was kind of weird to not play in front of, you know, an audience. But then at the same time, it's like you make the best of it and, you know, you just have fun and you play. So, you know, once things are open, definitely, you know, when you're here in the city, I'll keep you posted, man. So you can come out. And yeah. Hello and stuff. Yeah, man. And, and it's also cool, you know, with the spring and summer coming up, the outdoor yeah. gigs are, are going to be sure. happening as well. Sure, sure, sure. So, you know, like I said, I mean, step by step. And like I said, I mean. We've been seeing progress and, you know, last year, this time, actually today makes a year that we've been going through this whole pandemic stuff. You know, it's this today started, you know, a year ago, this whole madness. You're exactly right, because uh, that was the last I, w I was at a job for 29 years and it was a year ago to this day. And that was my last day there. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. I'm just glad that, you know, everybody's healthy and, you know, we're, we're here. We're still here. Still kicking. So, you know. Yeah. Still, still young to make make some trouble, oh, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, right. There's a lot to yeah. be done. There's a lot. There's a lot of work. Right. To do. A lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. So, Marcus, I really got to thank you for for coming by Joe Kelly Radio, and and hope to meet you in person sure. within a uh, few months. And you know, we we have bands come play live in the studio too. So um, you're always welcome to come up and just whatever you want to do a trio or just by yourself. Thank you, man. More than welcome to. Yeah, we'll do, man. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate yeah, it. and don't forget our, our listeners, official Marcus Machado.com, Machado, M A C H A D O.com, and uh, Aquarius Purple. Tell your friends a great record, and uh, there are actual records and uh, digital release coming up shortly. So, I gotta thank you, brother, for everything, and uh, thanks thank for the music. Thank you, I appreciate you, man.
Take care. Hey, Marcus. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Thanks. That, that went really well. It's gonna it's gonna turn into an hour special because I'll get music in and everything. Oh man, this is fun, man. This is fun, man. Yeah, like I said, anytime. Just once things are up and running, let me know. I'll definitely come out and you know do a performance and vice versa. I'll let you know when you know the QS TV stuff is um you know out and doing live shows and stuff so you can come out bring your wife whatever and yeah enjoy the show yeah, we're, we're we're only an hour away so we're, we're up there uh perfect. right on the coast in, in connecticut so perfect 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 man yeah. thanks for having me man appreciate yeah, it yeah can you can you quickly can you um two promos for my show yeah sure 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 cool. yeah the, uh, the first one is just you know your name you can freeform whatever you want and you're listening to joe kelly radio Okay, yeah, sure, sure. I'll do it right now. So that's the first one. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Peace, y'all. I'm Marcus.